Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new printer to show you. Recently, a representative from the brand Cheaty reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in checking out their newest entry in the desktop 3D printer marketplace. Well, of course I did. As someone who's been an early adopter in this space from just about the beginning, I mean, I still do have a wood MakerBot Replicator 1 and Cupcake kicking around the shop from the original Kickstarter campaign. I absolutely love trying out new gear. So after a bit of email back and forth, FedEx showed up to the shop with a Chidi Q1 Pro box. The printer comes fully assembled and similar to Chidi's other offerings is comprised of a welded seal frame and plastic enclosure. The large main door and removable top panels are both made of an injection molded clear plastic. I'm assuming some type of acrylic. Of course, there's the standard accoutrement included with the printer. Allen keys, wrench to remove the nozzle, tip cleaner, scraper, glue stick, and the USB. After you cut the shipping zip ties and remove all the packing material, you'll need to use one of the included hex wrenches to remove the four screws that hold the Z-axis down in place during shipping. Be sure to check that the voltage of the machine is correct for your area. On my machine, there was a sticker on the top that stated the expected voltage. Once you power it up, the machine will go through its initialization process, including input shaping. It'll have you load the extruder. It's expecting PLA. And of course, print the obligatory optimized Benchy included in the USB. Similar to the X3 Max, the Q1 includes a 60 degree C chamber heater to help mitigate warp and layer separation with some of your more difficult materials. You can also use this feature for drawing your filament. The Q1 Pro is configured as a Core XY machine. It features dual drive motors for the Z axis and boasts a build volume of 245 millimeters cubed. For user interface, you'll find a 55 by 96 millimeter color touchscreen. The printer on standalone mode operates on a lightweight version of Clipper with the more in-depth features available in Slicer. I've been using Orca as my slicer of choice for this machine and it's been great. In addition to the USB socket located on the top rear of the machine, you can also send files wirelessly via the printer's built-in Wi-Fi 6 adapter and monitor print progress with the built-in camera through the fluid connection in Orca Slicer. This printer comes with their new generation of extruder capable of reaching a temperature of 350 degrees C. The Q1 Pro comes equipped with a bimetallic nozzle that is compatible with a wide variety of filaments eliminating the need to swap nozzles in order to print carbon infused materials. Automatic bed leveling uses not only a proximity sensor mounted to the side of the print head, but also load cells in the frame of the Z axis. The bed heater on this printer is capable of reaching 120 degrees C to help with the all important first layer of some of your more exotic filaments. It also incorporates a nozzle cleaning and purge process similar to that of the Bamboo X1C. With the difference, instead of the machine pooping out the back, there's a catch bin located on the back wall of the inside of the machine. Now I've had this machine for a couple weeks now, and I've printed quite a lot of things for the new studio setup. Mostly wire management clips, as well as a set of cases for the new teleprompter screens. Yes, I'm using teleprompters. Also, I printed one of the shells of the scans of my forearm on this machine. I later used this print to make the plaster buck that I then used as the form for my seal of meal composite forearm cuff. And I've been really pleased with the quality of the prints that I've got off of this machine so far. I've had very few failed prints with it. In reality, it's been a real push button go type of experience for me with this machine. And really, my list of complaints and or suggestions for modifications on this machine is pretty short. First thing I'll be changing is the arm that the roll of filament is mounted to. Where it is as long and thin as it is, it's got a bit of torsional flex to it. The arm does manage to hold a one kilogram spool of filament, but where I have all of my printers lined up underneath my desk, I prefer something that mounts to the back of the machine like the other printers. I'm sure they made it this way so that the printer can sit right up against a wall and not take up the extra three inches of counter space that it would if the filament was mounted to the back of the machine, similar to other machines in this market space. The second thing I wish was different concerns the magnetic build plate. I love that magnetic build plates have become standard equipment on these modern printers. 
I remember when they were either not removable at all or when you were using binder clips to hold them in place on the heater bed. What I wish is that the build plate had more of an index to it. The Q1 has a raised lip in the back center of the heated bed, but nothing on the outside edges that you can easily rock the build plate against to make sure it's square before you lower it down and stick it to the magnets. And whether using load cells under the heat bed as part of their automatic bed leveling system, if you put the build plate on slightly crooked and the front edge is clipped over the side, it's bound to give you an error message somewhere along the way. The third thing I'm sure will get resolved once there's a real live profile released for this machine. What I ran into was it took quite a bit of dinking in order to get the printer to play nice with my network. The printer would say it was connected, and yet my laptop couldn't manage to see or connect to it. After a bit of back and forth with my rep and some searching on Reddit, I found the fix. What I ended up doing is manually inputting my network IP, and then after that, add colon 7125 to the host name and colon 10088 to the device IP. After that, the printer connected perfectly. I had control of the printer from my laptop and I could retrieve the time lapse videos that had been stored on the internal memory. Like I said, I'm sure this kind of thing will be corrected once there's an official profile released for this machine. At the time that I'm making this video, I haven't received an exact price for this machine, but I'm sure it'll be competitive. If you're in the market for a new printer, maybe give this one a look. I've had really good luck with the one they sent me for review. Anyways, that's what I have for this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, share my videos, and let me know what you think in the comments section. Thanks for watching. So I'm going to do a postscript addenda to one of the statements that I made about things that I would change on the printer. So as I was editing up, I started drawing up the little bracket that I was going to do for the spool holder. And what I noticed is if you take the arm off, this same detail that they use for the bracket that mounts to the back of the printer is close to what the spool holder is. Now it's not perfect, you know, on this one the bottom tab engages with the bottom of the little bracket, but this does fit in there and it's close. So you could probably get away, I know you can get away with a one kilogram just sitting there and it'd be just fine. Uh, for the larger two kilogram, eh, you're going to want to print an extender of some sort. Or do like what I do and just have a roller that sits off to the side. So thought I'd add that at the end rather than, you know, have something weird in the video and without rewriting the video, obviously. So keep that in mind. Still think it's a good printer. Uh, just you might not need to print anything different for the spool holder if you don't want to use the long flexi bracket. Now for the reason why everybody really stays to the end of my videos, here's a video of Richard the cat being a cat. Thanks for watching. Such a good kitty. Such a good kitty. Good kitty. Richard's a good kitty.
Happy kitty.